Levi, yes. Look at that point. One, up you go. Yes, Levi. Toes up, toes up. Control the come down. Control it all the way down. Uh, Crispy's amazing. And he pushes you to your absolute limit and he can tell where your limit is. Crispy is very cool. Daniel Crispin isn't your average suburban circus teacher. Yeah, you need to be here. You're losing power by doing it. The twice nominated Australian of the Year used to tour with the world's most famous troupe. I saw the show O oh, by Cirque du Soleil, and uh, it was all the money that I had to see it. And that was it. That was the time where I said, this is what I'm going to do. My name's Daniel Crispin, or Crispy, and I, um, I guess I'm a circus acrobat. What did your parents want you to do? Be a plumber, like straight up. Like, they're like, just stop school, be a plumber. But that wasn't going to cut it. I think he's kind of meant to be on stage. It's his natural state. <laughs> um, He's incredible at it. He has a magnetism about him. It's almost like a meditative moment where it doesn't matter what else is going on. When you're really like in that flow state with whatever is going on, everything else melts away and it's, it's an incredible moment and it, it's impossible to describe. After more than a decade of training and performing, Daniel finally got the call up to join Cirque du Soleil as a lead role. I just stood there and I had like that stare. Like I was like, are you kidding me? Like, what, what does this mean? <laughs> like, because it was still like a moment where it's got to be a mistake. Like, it's got to be a mistake. He was the poster boy for Taruk, the first flight. That's you. Yeah. Whoa. A production inspired by James Cameron's Avatar. He even worked with the Hollywood director. I can't think of a film that's like bigger than this. So when you're representing something like that, you want to make sure you do it to the very best of your ability. Daniel performed in front of record-breaking arena crowds across the world. His life as a professional acrobat was wild. Like two weeks in and I got asked to go and perform at Madonna's house and Cirque let me go to do her birthday party, come back and I'm in rehearsals the next morning. It gave me the opportunity to have just the most incredible life that most people would never dream of. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even when I talk about it, it seems stranger than fiction. But Daniel says behind the scenes, Cirque du Soleil was a mess. He battled one injury after another. It started with sprained and broken ankles from what's alleged to be faulty props and sets, and later a traumatic brain injury from accumulated concussions on and off stage. Three concussions in two weeks, and you kept performing. Yeah. Like, I'd go on stage and I just didn't know what direction I was. Daniel says Cirque du Soleil did not have his head or neck scanned and claims the company later directed him to delete any videos he had of the knocks, but he was told to take time off to get better. By the end of the sort of run, I felt like I was in the Hunger Games. Even after he recovered and returned to the show months later, new issues began plaguing him. His bicep and hip were in chronic pain. He couldn't feel his fingers. His leg was giving away at random, causing him to fall. He was taking painkillers after every show. It just felt like a, a melting pot of hurt. And I'd been logging all this at work and they just kept saying, it's just neural tension, it's tightness in your neck, it's tightness here, that's why it's getting numb. And um, I got told it's not gonna make it any worse if I keep going. Cirque du Soleil told you that? Yeah, it was. Why did you keep performing and pushing? It was few reasons. I really wanted to be, be able to get back to Australia, at least to Brisbane. You know, my dad was hearing impaired, like profoundly deaf his whole life, so for him to be able to see me perform for the first time as a main character in a show that's that visually like appealing, uh, I wasn't going to get that chance again because his cancer was pretty bad and while he defied the doctors by 10 years, um, his time was running out. His dad died months after seeing Taruk in 2017. And that show was Daniel's last. That actually feels a lot better, to be honest. Daniel's personal physiotherapist in Australia spent years helping him get to the top. 
and it was her who demanded he stop. I think that most people who have those types of injuries would probably not return to the level of sport that they were at. That's a lot looser. Dorothy Hawkins has worked with Olympic teams and says Daniel's injuries were some of the worst she's seen. It's a bit bleak. Yes, we've been through some dark times. Um, and there have been moments where he just felt like, I can't do this. This was laying on the table before they did the operation. Scans revealed Daniel had seven injured spinal discs, as well as nerve damage, a torn bicep and osteoarthritis. One of the worst things as an acrobat that you can imagine. It was really shocking not even being able to respond to someone calling his name without hesitation or walk without pain was um, quite upsetting. The old folks are always like, oh, you better watch out, you'll end up in a wheelchair. Like that sort of flippant remark came very close to a reality. Daniel is now preparing to sue Cirque du Soleil, alleging the company was negligent by failing to provide a safe workplace. Cirque du Soleil requires a great deal of perfection. Uh, perfectionism is probably a part of what they do. Lawyer James Trara alleges the company didn't adequately monitor or document Daniel's condition. When you're at that level, it's all about pushing yourself and pushing your limits, and sometimes you need to moderate that. And that's where a company like Cirque du Soleil's responsibility is? Absolutely, I believe so, yeah. Cirque du Soleil did pay for Daniel's first lumbar spinal surgery and some associated rehab, but that was it. It was almost like the carnival model of business where they pulled up stumps and then just vanished. He's since had at least seven operations and procedures, most of which he's paid for himself. How's it feel? Well, I woke up and I could feel my legs. Yeah, good. Like, first time in two years, I've been able to feel my legs, I mean. Despite Daniel's repeated pleas, Cirque du Soleil has refused to acknowledge that his spinal injuries came from his time with the company, which has made it difficult and at times impossible for him to claim insurance or get compensation. And for years, he's felt pressured to keep quiet. All information whatsoever, <laughs> artistic, creative and technical, without limitation, shall not be disclosed in any way whatsoever. It's basically saying, don't talk about anything. After more than two and a half years, Daniel has now been in rehab for longer than he performed with Cirque du Soleil. He says he's out of pocket up to $100,000 from medical expenses, home modifications and lost wages. I don't want anything other than <laughs> what was agreed upon and I don't think that that's too much to ask. I went into a show that physically maimed me. Cirque du Soleil has refused to comment for legal reasons, but in a general statement, it told the feed it provides the highest level of medical care and support to its artists. It said if artists need medical support at the end of contract, third-party insurers make decisions on care, which are removed from Cirque du Soleil influence. It's been hands down the most challenging rehab process that we've ever come across as a company. That's exactly what we're aiming for, mate. <laughs> exactly that. When you realised the full extent of his injuries, did you think that he would ever perform again? For a normal person, I'd say no, but for him, I thought yes, because he's just not a lay down and lie person. He, he's just got so much strength of character and mental toughness that I thought, no matter what happens, he's going to try and come back. But it's been four months since I first met Daniel. He's now using a walking stick and has been dealt a major blow. Doctors have told him he needs to have his spine fused, which could mean he'll never be back on stage. I got off the physio table and I just said it wasn't worth it. And Dorothy said, what do you mean? I said, that lifestyle, the whole career wasn't worth it because this is just hell. How would you describe your situation right now? I'm just falling apart and it's like drowning in a swimming pool and everyone's standing around holding like a life raft. And I'm like, hey, can I have one of those? And they're like, we we'll just need to have a meeting. Will you perform again after this surgery? I've got to have hope, but I don't, I, I don't foresee that as a possibility. I, I want to, but um, Sometimes want isn't enough.
does his case have the potential to perhaps set a precedent for companies like Cirque du Soleil? Um, I believe it should. Um, fundamentally what we want to do is ensure the safety of all performers, irrespective of whatever jurisdiction they're in, to avoid this from happening to the next person. I think my dream for circus is to tour with Cirque du Soleil and tour around the world and make it big. What have you learnt from Crispy? Never give up. That's what, I think that's, yeah, that's what I've learnt from Crispy the most, is to never give up and keep trying. Hey, if you enjoyed that, make sure you subscribe to The Feed's YouTube channel. And you can watch these videos here. See you next time.